Hi, welcome back to this update. So this is for the scaled sprite board. The mess of masking tape and underneath here I've got a bunch of extra 330 ohm resistors put in parallel with the existing pull-up resistors. Uh, this fixes the issue now with the scanline RAM which wasn't working so there was actually nothing wrong with the scanline RAM, it was just the pull-up resistance values for that particular one were all bad. On the other scanline RAM uh, it's just one resistor here which was not quite right, which is rather strange but now we can see that the emulation for the scale sprite position matches the scale sprite position on the screen and if I press uh, fire on the emulation it changes to the different position I press fire on the Commodore 64 and there we go the, the sprite changes position quite nicely don't forget I've just got the scaled sprites board plugged in at the moment the other layers are not active because I'm debugging and then if I press fire on the emulation we get this and then if I press fire on the real hardware we get this and then if I press fire again on the emulation we get this animation happening which looks rather nice and then if I do it on the real hardware press fire like so Oop. Darn. hold on a second I accidentally pressed it twice so there we go let's press it once and then again one, once more Ta-da! the animation happens the scaled sprites come in and I don't see much glitching or anything like that which is great the faster clock crystal renders the fill rate for the entire eight sprites horizontally even when they scale up to their large extent like this there's there's no encroachment here on the amount of fill rate that we get which was matching what I saw in the simulation and then if I press fire again uh, on the emulation we get this little demo um, as you can see I'm not actually copying across all of the data which is funny uh, or I'm copying across wrong data I need to fix the code for that uh, but then again if I press fire now of course I'm not copying across all of the data so we've got some random uh, information that was held in the RAM but um, basically the rest of the the rest of the sprites seem to be okay and there we go successful test successful fix I really need to look at not having these analog um, pull up resistors um, they always cause problems because I always need to tweak the resistance values it seems like on this scale sprites board and also the uh, uh, non-scale the regular sprites board as well these ones I always had to tweak as well with, with different resistances so I'm thinking about changing that to be completely digital electronics and you know, getting rid of the pull-ups it means that I'll need to change the logic for the scanline RAMs if I can do that I think I can but whether or not the number of chips makes sense is a different matter but anyway it means that actually the, the whole board was, was basically built correctly it was just the pull-up values for, for these scanline RAMs here which was not right so all in all a successful build from PCBWay plus a couple of extra chips that I had to get from the, the kind guy down the road I'm really quite pleased with this and the Commodore 64 is perfectly capable of, of running this display um, at a nice frame rate you can see it's a completely uh, adequate frame rate I think it's uh, 60 frames a second with all of these scale sprites and everything there with all of the sorting and everything that goes on because I'm adding bullets you see and those bullets are sorted along with the background objects as well so that's all great it, it draws it from uh, front to back basically near to far that's the way that the overdraw works or lack of overdraw fantastic so debugging update I've just added uh, parallel resistors to both scanline rams now as you can see here a whole bunch of hacky resistors 
to basically change the pull-up, 5 volt pull-up value. And as you can see, the demo works quite well. I'm going to reset that and start it again. So I've got two pieces of code. One is just the code which refreshes the data. So what I can do is that I can show you that working. I'm going to turn the board off, turn the board back on again, and there is the default power on state. Okay, And then what I can do is that I can run the data code send that to the 64 here we go and what it does is that it sends all of the information and then it just pauses waiting for fire to be pressed now that flick that you can sometimes see the horizontal line across the screen like this is because i'm not timing the wait for v blank before writing the sprite registers so depending on when i press fire it basically updates sometimes during the screen refresh, which is perfectly fine because this is just to show that I'm able to upload the data and that the two positions of the scaled sprites work. These M's are scaled sprites. Now I'm going to reset the Commodore 64 again now, and then I'm going to send the demo code, the main demo code. There we go. So now, with any luck, there we go. Full demo running as expected. The, the background screen is actually very dark and green, slightly green, and it's the one that's scrolling around in the background. Then we've got the scaled sprites doing the mega wang part of the logo. We've got normal sprites, the 2000 bouncing up and down this one here and then we've got the turbo edition now the turbo edition is actually the tile screen and the tile screen changes priority to the scale sprites so it goes in front and behind the scale sprites and the, this this dark colored green background here is a character screen okay now i can also press fire on the joystick like this and then it takes me to this here so I can fire. It leaves the, the tiles screen and the sprites in their last position because I haven't cleared them. Um, I'm just updating the scaled sprite data. Okay, so there we are. That all works rather well. And it all works, you know, and there's a little scale effect, so every time you fire it moves the player character a little bit closer to the screen with the scale. Just just kind of like a recoil effect or something like that. Um, just to show that it's actually scaled sprites being used and not normal sprites for the player character. Yeah, and, the player, and there you go. And the viewpoint subtly moves left and right as the player character moves left and right around the screen as well. Uh, so the perspective slightly changes, which is quite nice. It's not very obvious, but it's obvious enough. But when I go up here in the top left-hand corner, then we've got more stuff to the right and below us. And when I go to the bottom right-hand corner, then there's more stuff up and to the left. And there we go. So all in all, working quite nicely. Very happy with that now. Apart from the dodgy resistance. But that's okay. You live, you, you, you live and learn. So if you like this kind of stuff, then please uh, like and subscribe to the various different channels like YouTube and Itch and my Twitter feed as well, which also covers build information for all of these projects. It shows me uh, what you like and what you dislike, but what you like mostly, and I'll try and do more content along those lines. Next step will be to probably do the uh, APU board or maybe the sampled sound board with four channeled sample sound, um, basically to make it sound a lot like an Amiga. Thank you for watching.